What's going on guys? Welcome back to Lords of the Fallen. As soon as I saw how Radiant Magic worked in this game, I wanted to make a tank build. Can you survive hit after hit and just eat it rather than dodging? Well, not necessarily right away as you need to level up and get the stats to be tankier. But later on, that is definitely something you can do. Pump your magic and you can both decrease damage taken and increase your healing. This is the best OP tank paladin in Lords of the Fallen. For your convenience, I will display the full build at the end of the video at around level 45. For your starting class, you want to select the Orion Preacher. This is the most powerful starting class as you have a whopping 18 in your main damage stat. Radiance also starts pretty darn strong and gains access to excellent spells very quickly. The hammer you get with this class is S tier at staggering enemies and will deal excellent damage against the first section of enemies that you come across. You'll also gain a small shield that's one of the easiest items to parry with, which makes most enemies just get knocked down for posts constantly. Finally, you get your range magic spell, which is just okay. It works well for range, but shouldn't be something you try to rely on that much. Now, the only Umbral Eye worth anything early on is the Umbral Eye of the Betrayed right near the Windmill Checkpoint. I will, however, mention this time that the Pale Butcher Eye you get from the Swamp location is busted. Slot this as a secondary eye when you upgrade the Lantern, and time in the Umbral gives you Soul Charges back. So all Umbral-based enemies are a joke because you can stagger them quickly or pull them exactly where you need them to be. Get that for your second slot when you can, as it is the biggest change to the gameplay that I've run across insanely good for those giant goofy head creatures. For rings, you want the defaced ring which can be found just after the flail boss in the first area. You'll reach an area with a pokey head in front of a ladder. If you go umbro, you can head behind this ladder and climb down another one where the ring is held on a body. This spot can easily be remembered because there's an effigy to get out of the umbral directly next to the ladder. Once you see that, go get the ring. Plus three to health is really nice and since we want to be defensive, you need more health. Next, you want the Ring of Duty. This can be bought from the NPC Stomond in the main hub. He wears golden-ish armor and the ring buffs health and stamina by one. A quick and easy upgrade that's going to help you out a lot. Stamina being a nice plus since we don't want to waste too many points on it. Now, later on in the game, you can get a ring called Mana Stone Ring. I'd recommend checking the wiki so you know how to get it exactly, but it offers mana regen, which when paired up with runes can help you keep defensive buffs active literally forever. For this video, we're going to make an early game build, but it's worth mentioning that that ring is really cool for this setup once you can finally get to it. Now, there are actually several different amulets that you can use for this build. The first one you want is the Relic of Perpetuation. It's found early on. At the Bell Room Vestige Point, you can lead down the next path and go Umbral. Jump into the ditch where the water used to be and follow the path up. There's a nice set of armor right there as well as an open section where you can reach outside. Jump to the right and place a Vestige Seed. Then jump down and forward will be a platform leading to a corpse that you can siphon for the amulet. More health works towards the tank idea and it isn't the best, but your only option until the swamp. Once you make it to the swamp, you want to defeat the Medacious Visage, or as I call him, the Ugly Head Guy. After doing so, you can wrap around behind him and find this item called the Vanguard Rosary. This can be given to Dunmire at the main hub. Now, there are actually a few items you need to give him before this as well that may affect whether he sells the item. As soon as you enter the fight with the Scourged Sister or Holy Flail Lady, you can grab the Bloody Aspergillum. Near the Health Amulet, you can run past the large group of enemies on the platform there and grab the Hallowed Sentinel Scripture. And finally, you'll reach a point in this rainy area where an eye door blocks your path. Underneath is a corpse you can siphon that drops the Book of Sin. This is all found as you progress the first area of the game, so just look out for them and you should find them relatively easily. After each item is given, you can reload and Dunmire has usually new items. Eventually, mine was after the Rosary and that I cleared the next area, he's going to sell the Empyrean Pendant. Might need to wait a bit longer to get this one, but it increases holy damage and defense, which works towards the goal of being a tank. Or you can go with the final option being my personal favorite. Once you reach the swamp, you can hug the left wall and reach a shortcut back to the vestige point. Go back through the shortcut and you'll again want to hug the left wall. A short ways, you'll jump through a wall of vines leading to a statue. Use the spell Sanctify on the statue here and she will be freed. She then gives you an amulet called Pendant of Induration which increases your physical defense. I personally like this one the most because the most consistent amount of damage you're gonna take is from physical hits, and it really makes you better able to heal through those attacks. So ultimately, you have three decent options, more health, more damage, or more defense. 
Now for weapons, we have three separate things we're going to be gunning for. First off, we want Pieta's sword. This is the weapon you've been seeing everyone use since the game came out as it resembles a lightsaber, can be grabbed early on and is really, really good. So naturally, everyone's running it. Well, for this build, it is still the best option. We want a one-handed weapon that's scaled really well into Radiance, since that's all we want to pump for mana. So Pieta's sword will naturally defeat enemies easily as it gets boosted by your build. And since we want to focus on tank potential, this lets you use much less stamina and block attacks when at all possible. To get the item, you need to defeat Pieta, which leads you to the main hub, so not too hard of a challenge. Then progress through the game, getting the Bowl of Revelations and handing it to Molhew after which you'll need 40 blue shrimps to buy it from him. This is quite a lot compared to where you are currently in the game. I got the sword after beating the main boss of the swamp. Soul siphon the memories after each main boss as well as the small ones you're going to see around the world. This should give you just the right amount after that fight. Up until then, the hammer you get along with status buff items you find is going to carry you through. Pieta's weapon is just the ultimate goal though. It's so fast, it has twice the reach of any short sword in the game and inflicts smite which is lightning from the sky. It's an extremely fun weapon, a really OP weapon and your best option for the entire game with this setup. Next, we want a decent shield. Now, shields are pretty darn good for tanky play, but in my opinion, with the Pieta sword, it's actually better as a one-handed weapon. Two-handed, and it's much slower with a worse attack pattern. So, we want something to complement that one-handed style. Well, just after the main hub, you can head out to a wooden platform area. This leads all the way back to where the pyro merchant is and a few other items. Take this all the way back there and instead of using the key to open up the door, head right. Up the ramp is the Crimson Rector Shield, which you're only going to need to throw one additional point into strength to wield it, and it's a very well-rounded item. Now here's the thing. You can use this to block and reduce damage taken as much as possible. Yes. Or, and I recommend this, try to parry. The parry window for shields is very, very generous. This coming from someone who's probably one of the worst parrying players in the entire world. If you at least attempt to delay your block a little bit longer and try to parry just every once in a while, you can gain massive advantages against 90% of these bosses. As someone who understands that there's less skilled players out there, I do hate recommend parrying, but it is really easy to do in this game, and if you're running a shield, it's just your best option. If it doesn't work, just block instead. Who cares? But parrying really does break boss's poise meter and moves the fight along faster. Lastly, we need a new casting item or spell catalyst. And luckily, we already found one. Remember the stone NPC we freed with the heal spell? Reload that area after exhausting her dialogue. An item behind her will now be available, which is the Willmark's catalyst. A much better scaling catalyst that provides four spell slots instead of three. So now you can hold all four spells you need for the game and be sure to upgrade this item along with your weapon and shield as you progress. The spells are the most important part of this build, and like I just mentioned, we get four in total. Damage does not matter and is not something we'll go for because our sword's gonna more than make up for it. And you can infuse the sword with all kinds of damage to make it even stronger. So no damage spells. Instead, we're gonna beef up. You start with Radiant Flare, which is a ranged small blast. It's good at taking out crossbow jerks and hitting gargoyles off the ceiling. Then you have Sanctify. After you beat Pieta, the first major boss, you head up the tower on your left instead of going down. Inside the chest there is this spell. It'll place a very large sigil under your feet, which both heals you while you're in it and cures status effects. It uses a lot of mana, but it's a massive game changer. Stand in this with a shield up and you're basically immune to all damage. Best part of all, any status like poison or fire, which melts your health quickly, is instantly gone once you step inside this circle. This makes you a stationary tank that can't be stopped, and honestly, sigil-based magic is really, really fun to make use of. Next, we have Aura of Tenacity. If you reach the main hub and head behind the Vestige, you can break some crates next to an NPC. Behind these crates will be this spell, and it's by far the best early game spell. Aura of Tenacity will cast a golden aura around your character and funnily enough, any nearby friendly characters as well. While the aura is active, you slowly drain mana. It is a very slow drain, and with as much radiance as we're gonna have, it'll last a long time. The aura is gonna decrease all damage received. This is a spell that lasts entire boss fights, can be grabbed immediately, and massively reduces damage taken. If you cast this and stand in a healing sigil, you will be tankier than you ever thought possible. It is the single most fun thing I've ever done in a Souls-like game. 
Then you have your final spell, Radiant Weapon. This is sold by Dunmire and it adds radiant damage to your weapon, which yes, does work on Pieta's sword for whatever reason. Radiance is by far the best starting class as all this stuff is so easy to get and it makes you an absolute powerhouse. But you can't tank without a very good set of armor and fortunately we already have the best paladin armor in the game. The vanguard rosary pendant we got earlier after the facehead boss can be given to Dunmire, after of which he will sell you the full vanguard armor. Throw on the full set and color it with the ice grip tinked and you're a golden paladin of legend. Very nice looking armor with excellent early game defense. As for stats, you want to prioritize Radiance over everything. Increasing that grants you more damage and more mana. More mana means more sigil heals and longer defense buff time, which makes you unkillable. So get that stat as high as possible throughout the entire game. I'd recommend about 15 stamina at minimum. Throw a point in here and there about up to 25, so you can block properly and still attack when needed. Then everything else goes into vitality. By the end of the game, you'll ideally have about 75 Radiance, 50 health, and 25 stamina. This build is not only quick to set up, but it's very easy to use. You'll activate your defense buff before entering the fight. When you're able, place down a healing sigil. Now stand there, block hits, and dodge what you can. Try to parry if at all possible, and then beat the boss to death with your light stick. Use mana clusters as your mana starts to get low, and other than that, you're good. I tested this on several bosses, and there really is nothing like it. I was able to get the Light Reaper to one fourth of his health left at level 40 because this build is way stronger than it deserves to be. This, in my opinion, is the best early game build with the most tank potential. Radiance is a ton of fun and you become the boss yourself. If you did enjoy this video, a like down below would be fantastic. I know people have made Radiance builds already and people have used this sword already, but who cares? This is the best way I've found to make an easy Radiance tank build, and it is an incredible experience. Lords of the Fallen got Sigil Magic right, it got Support Magic right, and it gave them to you as soon as you start the game. Leave a like down below if you want to support me, and as always, a full build display will be up shortly. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.